Oh, clocks. Oh, it's just like in the third late in game. <laughs> oh, man. I, like, okay. Think about this game. So, this is a British pawn brokery. Oh my! There are all sorts of tools and contraptions in here that I've never laid eyes on before! Ah, Suzata-san. And that spark of wonder in your eyes. You can't wait to scour the shelves, can you? I get the impression you enjoy places like this. Have you never been here? It's really- it's literally like two doors down from the, the home. Ah yes! I don't know why, but seeing such a lot of things I don't understand is a real thrill for me. Oh, he's dressed up. My dear fellows, let us not forget why we are here. Mr. Sholmes! We are calling on matters of business, not pleasure. Wh he's, he's just punching Susato! Why? So mean! Does he actually- Oh, it doesn't make contact. Okay. <laughs> Makes out of the back of her head. That's not nice. <laughs> and clearly, Mr. Sholmes needs business, too, judging from the spark of fury in his eyes. Oh my god! Ah, uh, Mr. Sholmes, sir. Welcome back. Did you hear that brazen welcome? Well, yes. We are potential customers, after all. We are disgruntled customers, Mr. Narahodo. And it's time to inform Mr. Windybank of our ire. Ear? Whatever, I don't know, Parasite. Come! The fight is afoot! I ain't fighting him! Why does he blink at, like, two frames? <laughs> Naturally, you will recall this, which I retreat from you some days ago. Ah, oh, yes. The second-rate fiddle is not my fateful instrument, Mr. Windybank. The colors of the wood are different. It has holes in it. It's not even the same size. A wonderful summary of our observations, Mr. Sholmes. I, I'm so very sorry, sir. How utterly unforgivable of me. An inexcusable mistake for a pawnbroker. There's only one way to make amends. I shall have to take my own life! Very extreme. But do it, I dare you. I... I don't think that will be necessary, do you? <laughs> just threaten him and be like, Oh, we don't need to take it that far. If I may just say one thing before I pop off. <laughs> ah, yes? It was you, sir, Mr. Sholmes, who took it upon himself to remove the item the other day. <gasps> I believe... Sorry. As I recall, I entered the storeroom to fetch your violin when I heard... Ah, here it is. You did. And when I turned to controvert you, you are taking the veil and left, sir. However, there can be no doubt that the blame lied firmly at my own door for allowing you to leave. So I shall not grumble or grouse any longer. May this guilt die with me. Uh, no, 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 no. Stop, my dear fellow. The fault is mine. Ooh. It would appear that the fight is over. I do humbly apologize, Mr. Winnebank. Evidently, my questionable disposition pre precipitated this tragedy. Well, you wouldn't be Mr. Herlock Sholmes without that questionable disposition now, would you? Haha, <laughs> I do believe you may be right, sir. Ah, <laughs> It's either laugh or cry, I suppose. You are, it must be said, one of my more challenging customers. I need to remind you of the peculiar collection of items you've brought through my door in the past. Oh, peculiar items? In the extreme, man. For example, the unpublished manuscript of an eponymous work, the novels of Herlock Sholmes, or some such some, 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 some. Oh my! A new full fledged novel? An unpublished? A story I've yet to read, you mean? Yeah, forgive me! But well, wait! Before you die, you must tell me more! <laughs> We're just okay with letting him threaten himself. <clears throat> I must know more! Tell me everything! 
Oh, wow. Soto-san is really fired up now. Is there really an, an unpublished story under this very roof? Well, one day the gentleman here brought in an old metal chest, you see. I should like to entrust this to your care for a while, Mr. Windybank. Mm, for a chest like that, one shilling store, not a farther more. It houses something of very great value indeed. The latest manuscript, recounting the adventures of one Mr. Herlock Sholmes. I beg your pardon, a manuscript? You wish to depart on a manuscript? Indeed I do, for I am confident it will be quite safe here. And that was that. As such, Mr. Sholmes latest tale of otherworldly mystery lies dormant in my storeroom. Mr. Sholmes, is that really true? Do I sense that someone doesn't want to talk about this? I continue to pay your fee, do I not? Then kindly continue to store my belongings, securely. Oh, there's some fucking special important document in there that we don't know of, it's not a manuscript. Of course, sir, of course! You're safe and sound with me, I assure you, on my life! This is all very strange. So it just- he also acts as like a storage room? I don't- like, this- this place still doesn't make sense to me. I wonder, could I ask you something? Ah, a gentleman from the east, I see. Yes, that sable suit. I suppose I could offer you sixpence for it. Without wishing to offend, the tone is somewhat dull. Sorry. Aha! But for your splendid attire, ma'am. Five guineas, no less. The colors are exquisite. The design, exotic. Eastern artistry is finest, may I say. Oh my! Five guineas, you say? How interesting! Why do I feel as though I've suffered some sort of defeat here? Actually, I was hoping to ask you about your business. I've heard it said that pawnbrokery are used rather like banks here in London. Yes, sir, indeed. Many of my customers utilize the establishment as you just described. I appraise their items and offer them a proportionate loan and two months of secure stowage. If, if in that time they repay the original sum to me plus the agreed interest, their items are happily returned. But what happens if they don't pay you the money? Then the items are offered for sale in my shop, as you can see on the shelf behind me. Oh. So you never sell items before the two months has passed then? So items are brought here to store for two months. The man gives them money for the items, based on the value of whatever he thinks it is. And then within the two months, if you pay back the money that he loans you, plus the interest that's, that's charged, then you get the item back. But if you don't pay within those two months, then he has a right to sell your shit. Okay, I think I get it. I just don't... Oh, I guess the idea, I guess, I guess the idea is that you want the money, I guess. Okay, that's fine. That's right, man. That's right. Which means some considerable responsibility rests on my shoulders. Should a customer's precious belongings be lost? The only recompense is for me to end it all! The very idea, Mr. Winnieback, is an absurdity. One should never talk of one's demise so casually. Says the man who was telling us all it was a good day to die only this morning. Let us not forget that I have already helped you take measures to ensure such a tragedy never occurs. Oh, what sort of measures? I engineer a simple device, which Mr. Windybanks has installed here in his shop. I call it the Red-Handed Recorder. Is that not so, Mr. Windybank? <sighs> what was that deep sigh about? A recorder? Oh, like a camera or something to like catch people stealing? What on, what on earth is that Red-Handed Recorder? Use your eyes, my dear fellow. There are two just below the ceiling. I can see what appears to be a camera attached to some sort of timing device. I can't see it anywhere. Where? Up in the ceiling. I literally can't see it. I don't know if my screen is too dark or what. That's okay. Very astute. 
It is indeed a camera, furnished with some hundred pieces of celluloid film. And every 30 minutes precisely, the camera automatically records the appearance of the shop. Pure, I have an example I can show you. Oh, there's a puppy on the desk. Ah, uh, yes. A print from the camera set to record the activity of the sh at the shop counter at 4 a.m. I developed a special type of film so sensitive it produces a crystal clear image even in the darkness. Really? That's extraordinary. Yes, you can clearly see the counter and the door behind it, it looks. So you see, were someone to enter the premises with ill intent, his identity would be summarily, summarily exposed. If they come within the 30 minutes. <laughs> but, did you not say that the photographic prints were taken at 30 minutes intervals? Indeed, as you say, my dear madame. Then, what if the incident were to occur in between the times? One could only say, that would be a cruel twist of fate. Hmm. I must confess your devices have been giving me some cause for distress of late. I beg your pardon, Mr. Winnebeck. Surely there are anything but distressing. Reassuring is the word. It's the cost of the film, sir. You most graciously placed not one, but two cameras in my shop after all. Which means I must pay for nigh on 100 utterly useless prints every single day. I'm afraid the cost of the film will break me before I'm much, very much older. Then just uninstall the cameras. Nevertheless, a small price to pay to ensure the safety of my preferred pawn brokery, no? My dear fellows, we verd on an age where safety and security come at a price. Oh, heaven help us. Now then, Mr. Soames, allow me to return your precious violin. Oh, it's so tiny. Okay, so a viola is like a bigger I instrument, I guess. Ah, the very thing. Thank you, Mr. Winnebanks. But you also let a cat destroy the viola. Perhaps this might mark the end of peculiar items you try to pop, hmm? Because if anything were to happen to one of them, this would be the only answer. Um, I really think you ought to stop waving that gun around. Someone could get hurt. Fear not. Sorry? I've only loaded a single bullet, so no one but myself could possibly be harmed. That's not really what I meant. Is he gonna show up dead? Is he gonna wind up dead? Good day to you then, Mr. Winniebanks. It's been a pleasure as always, Mr. Scholz. Does he like him or not? I can't even tell. So, Mr. Narodo, now we can explore at last. Ah, yeah. Examine the place. Okay. Let's examine from left to right, I guess. Oh, he's <laughs> I like that he's checkmarked. <laughs> what we got here? There's a gun. I love the picture of the realistic dog. <laughs> Look at that enormous ledger open on the counter there. Oh, that was Sato, sorry. Mr. Winnebeck is, if nothing else, very particular about recording the items he accepts. He'd have to be. Otherwise, he'd get himself into all sorts of trouble. Which might explain the thing that catches my eye far more than the ledger. This revolver here. Do not entertain even a single thought of pilfering an article herein, my dear fellow. Hmm? I assure you, Mr. Windybank would not hesitate to draw that weapon with speed bellying, belying his portly size. Oh, you, you don't mean he'd... Blow his brains out? Indeed. In recompense, in recompense for his blunder. Oh my... But in any case, of course we would never do such a thing. How could you even suggest it? There seems to be a little door hidden behind that curtain there. Oh, I wasn't trying to go there. I was trying to look at the fucking table. That leads to the storage room, where Mr. Windbag keeps articles that are currently in pawn. Ah, I see. There's nothing of particular interest inside. I certainly wouldn't recommend any larcenous activity. Recommend it or not, it's not something I tend to do. There is but one key, and Mr. Windybag keeps it in his pocket at all times. Before he sleeps, he places it into a small pot, which he slides under his pillow. 
Why do you know this? Oh, how on earth do you know that, Mr. Sholmes? I am a detective, sir. It is my business to know what others do not. I am frequently assailed by information that I neither care for nor wish to retain. Mr. Sholmes, you are a wonder. And the prime suspect if this pawnbroker is ever burgled. Burgled. Whatever. I wanted to look at the scale. I wanted to look at the dog. I can't be able to let me look at the dog that's right there. That dog belongs to somebody. Look at this. What could this lovely big shiny box be? That, my dear madame, is a music box. Surely you have such a thing in your own country. Oh my. Yes, but I've never seen one so large before. Shall we listen a while? A music? Oh, as in like it's a jukebox? What a sublime sound. It's like the music of angels. I've never heard anything like it before in my life. This particular specimen is of the larger variety, commonly found in public houses and restaurants. There is a metal disc inside on which the notes to be played are recorded. Simply by replacing the disc with another, any music you care to imagine can be played. My goodness, what a simply delightful machine. Indeed. Though their popularity has waned recently with the development of the gramophone, I suppose. Or, or, or of course, whatever. Ah. <sighs> Science and technology advance at such an overwhelming pace. Oh, I want to listen to more of it. What an assortment of things there are on the shelves here. Crockery, footwear, clocks and watches. Almost anything you care to imagine. Those are forfeited items, offered for sale by the pawn broker. What does that really mean, though? When you pawn, or colloquially pop, an item, the broker loans you money against its worth. He stores the items for an agreed period of time, after which the loan must be repaid. If not, he is free to display it in a shop for sale, at a price of his choosing. Oh yes, now you've explained it. I'm noticing a little price tag on everything. Of course, simply by paying the agreed interest of the loan, one can extend the period of safekeeping. So you may pawn that black gob of yours without fear, my dear fellow. My treasured university uniform? Never! It embodies my student spirit! And also, I would have no clothes to wear, like, at all. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. 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 Now, what do you suppose this rather enormous machine does? It seems to have two little windows for looking through. Allow me to enlighten you, my dear fellows. What you are looking at is a stereoscope. Stereoscope? A stereoscope? Fascinating. It is aptly named, I assure you. Look through the eyepiece and see for yourself. Oh, I should be delighted to. Excuse me a moment while I have a look. Just before you do, there is something I should point out. My dear fellows, in order to see the image properly, stereoscopically, as it were, you will need to be cross-eyed. What? Really? However, if that is beyond you, it is of little consequence today. You have to be cross-eyed to see through it? Alright then, I'm going to try. <laughs> what? Then. So I need to be cross-eyed, like I'm trying to look at my own nose. What? What's wrong? What's in there? Oh god, I'm scared. What the? Isn't that the, the, the maid? The maid from the first case, the juror? I I don't believe it. What are we, what are we shocked at? I don't understand. Oh, I see. Like, it's like 3D. Like, there's layers to it or something. I, how is that supposed to be fucking shown through? <laughs> it's just a photographic print, but it seems that you could reach out and touch it. Yes, the sense of death is startling, is it not? Stereoscopes are one of London's many fads. They are often found in the little stalls in the park. People queue for hours to see them. Why? Why are people meddling with such black magic? 
It is no magic, my dear madame. It is. Well. Far too complicated to explain at present. We shall save this lesson for another day. Oh. <laughs> I thought that they were gonna see like a dead body or something that like that related to fucking them or something. It didn't fucking scream at none. Uh is this the fucking camera thing? Look at this! Whatever could this be used for? Okay, it's another camera thing. I don't know what that is. Um, or I have no idea. Huh? There's a small catch just here. Look. Do you put your eyes in it or something? Why is it on the floor? We're going to open it, aren't we? Oh, it's not on the floor. I think it's on a cushion or something. What? Oh my, that's amazing. It has some sort of spring-loaded mechanism. What do you look through in it? Which will never manage to put back the way it was before. Hmm? What are you two doing? What? Us? No, no, nothing. No, nothing at all. Whatever this device is, it seems to have a pair of little windows to look through. It feels as though I've seen something rather similar to this elsewhere. That's it? That's all you're gonna say about it? Shit. That's not a calendar you could easily miss, is it? 15th April. Today's date. Oh yes, that's not for sale, I must point out. It is an Eastern style pager day calendar. Eastern style? Do you guys not have- do, do, Does Great Britain not use calendars? Every night at midnight, I tear off the front page to reveal the following day's date. Eastern too? That's so fucking grand- like, what's with the frame? It's so grand for something that's meant to be- The perfect calendar for a tearaway fellow such as yourself, Mr. Winniebank. And who was it who walked out of here with the wrong violin before? Well, when the great storage period had passed without payment, articles are forfeited, you see. So I have to keep a close eye on the date. It's something of a pawnbroker's obsession, you might say. Oh yes, I can see you're very dedicated to your job. He has to be. What? What? Only tuppence for it. That ain't fair and you know it. What? What's this? The article is barely worth a penny, miss. I cannot offer more. What's happening? I don't understand what's going What? Sounds like there's an argument brewing over by the counter. Come on, that can't be right. Are you even a proper butcher at, at it? What? I've seen all you to see, young girl. What? What's going on? Oh, it's, it's Lestrade. Wait. Don't we know? I'm sure I recognize her. Oh, yes. It's the young lady. From Mr. McGill, that's trial two months ago. Yo, she's a thief. Oh my god, hoity toity toity. Her name is Gina Lestrade, my lord. She's a chancer, and her crossed among large crowds, relieving poor people of their purses. What's commonly called a pickpocket? What was her voice? Fuck, I don't know any, I don't remember anything. She looks nice in that, that coat. To do not. What? Hey, she still has the fucking gun thing. Hello, Miss Lestrade. I hope you've been well. Hey, what? You remember me then, do you? Well, I remember you being completely surrounded by smoke. That's for sure. So, what are you doing in there? Down and out, like the rest of us. Nothing neat. Come to pop that black weasel side coat of you. What is it about this black uniform that makes everyone comment on it? <laughs> I, for one, think you look very handsome in Irinosuke. Ah, good day. Unless I'm much mistaken. You would be the young pickpocket who stole our experimental smoke grenade launcher. Uh, Mr. Jones! So, you have something of value to pawn, do you? Allow me to see the article, and I shall negotiate with Mr. Winnipeg on your behalf. I, oh, I thought... Didn't Iris take her to go to the poem to like get that back? Why does she still have it? Pull the other one. I don't need no help from some stuck up D. Get out of my business. Go on, or I'll, or I'll make trouble for you. I, whatever, doesn't matter. As you wish, Mr. Strahd. I will happily remove myself from your presence. There he goes. He left. He's really done it. He's gone. 
Oh, I'm sorry. But as I said, there really is no room for negotiation here. What is that thing he has in his hand? Some kind of metal disc. Is it to play music on? And you! Go on! Leave me alone! Oh, Mrs. Strahd, just pretend we aren't here. We shan't be offended in the si slightest. Sato-san can really stand her ground when she wants to. Whatever. She looks so cool, though. Um, what you been up to? Somehow, I didn't really think you were the sort of person who use a pawnbroker, Miss Lestrade. Yeah, well, I am, all right. I'm a Londoner, just like everyone else. That's a problem, eh? That a problem, is it? Well, she pawns the shit that doesn't belong to her, so she can get the money, and she never has to come back for it because it was never her to begin with, right? It makes sense. No, no, not at all. It's just that, well. Oh, I get it. I know what you're thinking. That thing probably don't even belong to her. Probably got it on a dive, didn't she? Yeah, I can see it written all over your Chevy Chase. What? Well, I, I might have been thinking something along those lines. I think it's a reasonable thing to think of. You're not going to deny it, Miss Nanahodo? No. <laughs> it makes sense. It seems like a perfectly reasonable thing to think. She steals shit. <laughs> All right, then. I'm just going to come out and ask you straight. Do you pawn things that you steal from other people? Otherwise, what use? What, what value is there if you don't fucking do something with it, right? You, st you can steal everything you want, but like if you can't make money off of it, then it's, pr it's useless. Well, uh, I don't know best to answer that, really. Um... Suppose, sometimes. You're not going to deny it either, Mrs. Lestrad. Lestrade? Isn't Lestrade the name of, um... Was Lestrade the name of the detective guy in Sherlock? Or am I making that up? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Lestrade sounds like a very familiar name. But not this time, alright? I swear, that thing belongs to me. The disc that Mr. Windybank is holding. Perhaps we should see what he has to say about all this. Oops. Hold on. Let's examine him. Mr. Windybank, what exactly is this metal disc that Mrs. Stride has brought in? It seems to have hundreds of tiny little bumps on its surface. Ah, this is a music disc, you see. For use inside a music box. In a music box? Play it, play it, I want to hear it. What? You don't even know what a music box is. Sis, you Eastern lot ain't too savvy, eh? I know what a music box is. i just never seen one of these discs before. Small protrusion on a metal disc encodes the tune to be played by the music box. You simply insert the disc and set the machine going, and beautiful music plays. What an invention. It's so incredible. Tell us, what tune is on this disc? Well, I'm afraid I couldn't tell you that. There are so many different types of music box you see. British made, German, Swiss. I have no way of knowing which particular machine this disc was made for. Ah, I see. Can't you just pop it into it and see if it'll play? And that's it in a nutshell. I wouldn't have any customers for an item like this, even if the young lady forfeited it. Really, I'm already offering more than I should at a penny. That's a pack of the lies! He told me he did! He said it was... well... He? He who? He? Who? <laughs> oh, whatever. Never you mind. It just ain't right, that's all. That this is what good bunny. I know it is. Well then, you'll have to try your luck at another pawn brokers, won't you? <laughs> She's been in before, of course. This little tattered demal- de What? Tattered demalion? What, whatever that is. What the hell is that? That was a long word. I see. I brought some dubious articles or others with her every single time I might add. Dubious? What are you trying to say? I'm an honest customer, me. So, is there something dubious about the disc she brought in today? Well, if only we're that simple. Sorry? What do you mean? What she actually brought in was a storage ticket. Ah, a storage ticket. So... She's picking something up. 
Miss Strauss, I actually come to redeem an article from you today. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. A girl like me is a lot of stuff what needs storing. Alright, yes. That's definitely dubious. The article in question would have been forfeited at midnight tonight. But as she gave me the ticket for it and repaid both the loan and the interest, I was obliged to return the article to her. But what was the article? Do tell us, Mr. Windybeck. The little scamper's wearing it, man. Oh, the coat? It's the overcoat she redeemed. Oh. What? What's wrong with that? It fits, don't it? I mean, it's mine. So of course it does. So, what about the disc then? How does that come into all this? Ah, oh, the disc is something else. A new article to pawn, if the girl and I can agree to a price. <laughs> I'm tired of bleeding to my left. I'm confused. I thought you said that Miss Lestrade brought in a storage ticket today. What are you guys not understanding? She came in to get something with the storage ticket and she wants to pawn something else off. What is the- what are you guys not understanding? <laughs> it's really quite simple. Yes, the child brought me a storage ticket and the money owned on it as you said. For this heavy black coat, which you returned to her care, as I understood it. That's right. Yes, and rather unsurprisingly, as soon as the little rag muffin put the thing on, she went rifling through the pockets. Oh, you mean... What? Don't you know I threw the stare at the lady? Ah, oh, I see. So it came from the pocket of the overcoat, did it? If you mean this desk, then yes, exactly, ma'am. And she immediately tried to pawn it. For quite a high price as well. This is all rather suspicious, I think. Give it up! I'm just trying to pawn something like anyone else would. Miss Lestrade, I asked who... May I ask who deposited the overcoat here in the first place? Um, well... Me? It doesn't really appear to be your size. But she looks so cute in it. Me, old man! It's me, old man! Ain't it? What? Is it, Miss Lestrade? Yes, this is definitely all rather suspicious. Hmm. What? Who says? Who's saying this? Out of my way, please. Who said? Who's saying this? <laughs> is he gonna die? Who's he? Who is this picture postcard English gentleman? He's so bright. Good day to you, ladies. Gentlemen. I don't have a voice for him. I don't know who he is. But who is he? What's your problem, eh? There is no problem. As long as you remove yourself. I have a matter to discuss with the proprietor. I don't like when he looks at me. He's like kind of scary. And if you intend to make a problem of it, I shall see you outside, little girl, for the hiding you deserve. What? What's a hiding? Is that like spanking? Look, ain't it obvious? I ain't done talking with him yet. If you think you're such a jet, you should know I'll wait in line. Well, you are an impudent little brat, aren't you? As well as a pickpocket. Or whatever, I don't, I don't have a voice for him. I don't forget. Eh? Who, who are you? How do you know what I am? And the question is, how do you not know who I am? You haven't the courtesy even to remember the faces of your victims, it seems. What? You mean I... from you? Broker? Oh, yes, sir. Busy day today, huh? I believe this filthy pocket thief has just redeemed an article from you, no? Yes, yes, sir. The article in question belongs to me. I demand for it to be returned at once. But she's wearing it. Oh my! <laughs> now that's a lie! What are you trying to pull? Give me back my overcoat, you wastrel. And needless to say. Why he posted like that? Are you related to Sholmes? Surely not. Any music box this too. No! You can't have it! You just can't! It's meal pens! Or it was! 
Now it's mine! <gasps> Goodness, Mr. Naruhoto! I don't want to get involved in this. This is a very awkward situation. Let's leave. I don't want to be involved in this. Whatever, so I don't care. Yes. I think perhaps we should hear both sides of the story in a little more detail. What? I don't want to hear it. I don't care. <laughs> uh. Mr. Strahd, is what the gentleman is saying? What you dick? It's all lies, ain't it? Obviously. I swear on my life. I ain't never laid eyes on that dandy before. Let's hear it now, you little rag muffin. You stole it, didn't you? That ticket you brought in here just now. No! I swear it! I swear to God! It was barely an hour ago. I was walking along the street, minding my own business. When this little guttling ran into me, I knew at once what had happened. I still don't have a voice for him. I don't know. I even robbed it again, I thought to myself. Those wretched pickpockets. Maybe if you didn't dress so gaudy, people wouldn't be picking you as a target. Yet again? No, oh, yes. As you can see, I'm a man of impeccable style. This isn't the first time that I've been targeted by these back slum scoundrels. Now then, relinquish my overcoat. <laughs> oh, come along, Mr. Strahd. Give the good gentleman his coat back. If you're going to cause trouble, I shall have no choice but to call the police. Oh, hold on! Why does everyone think it's me? Just look at this dandy cove, and you think I'm the dodging one? I'm sorry, but no one's going to believe you. Well, what about evidence? Yeah. Where's your evidence that I've stolen something, eh? Come on, let's see it. Oh, I have evidence, naturally. You what? I can't figure out his voice. But do I want to figure out his voice? Evidence that the article of Mr. Stride redeemed actually belongs to this gentleman. Of course! We need only consult Mr. Windybag's ledger to know the truth. Will we be able to look at the name of the person who deposited the article in the first place? Yes, brilliant. I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid that won't be possible. Oh! I never ask customers' names. That's a strict policy of mine. But, why not? Well, as you can imagine, some of my customers have circumstances to consider. A great many of them prefer to maintain their anonymity. Yes, I see. But then, how can you know if an article belongs to the person asking to redeem it? Oh, it's quite simple. Good sir, might I trouble you for the watchword associated with the article in question? Of course, it's... Professor. Professor? Yes, that's right. And all the evidence we need. This gentleman is the rightful owner of the article, without doubt. A watchword? Interesting. Is that like a, like a, just like a password or something? Or like a, 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 a what? Not a safe word. What do you, what do you, whatever. So, about these watchwords, Mr. Winniebank. As I just explained, I never ask customers' names when they deposit items with me. There are many reasons why. Certain customers would like to keep their activities secret. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Sherlock is over there! <laughs> uh. That wasn't exactly a subtle glance at Mr. Sholmes now, was it? Great detectives have no dark secrets! None at all! You're swell. Anyway, that's why I always ask for a watchword whenever I accept a new article. In many ways, it's like the secret combination of the numbers used to unlock a vault. The date of deposit, a description, and a watchword uniquely identify each item. And of course, then I give the storage ticket to the customer. When someone comes to redeem something, I ask for the ticket and the watchword. And if that someone tells you the correct watchword, you return the article. In this case, you didn't fucking, you just gave the person back their thing just without asking the word. That's right, sir, yes. Just as soon as the requisite fee is paid. And I have supplied, and I have supplied you with the information you require already, but for the avoidance of doubt. The article in question is an overcoat, deposited two months ago on 15th February. With a watchword of Professor. All perfectly correct information, sir. But, but how? 
Really, this is beyond a joke now. There is no further room for that. <laughs> what? What is there to... So I guess... Oh, he's gone! Whoa, he disappeared. <laughs> Who is he? Why are you here? Why are you like this? Excuse me, but who are you? One would expect the Inquirer to introduce himself first. So clearly, you are not British, so perhaps our ways are foreign to you. Oh, sorry. Yes, we're from the Empire of Japan. We're studying here. Oh yes, Japan. I've heard talk of the place. I don't have a voice for him. I go. Oh. Its inhabitants live on some fiery brown colored soup dressed up with exotic spices. I don't know what to. You might be thinking of somewhere else. What was that theatrical gest gestulation about? Perhaps. Anyway, if you are a gentleman, sir, you offer your own name first before inquiring after the name of another. Of course, yes. I'm Yunosuke Narohodo. I'm a lawyer. Well, a student of law, really. My name is Sato Mikotoba. I am Mr. Narahoto's assistant. I see. My name is Benedict. Yes. Egbert. Egg, what? Egert Benedict. Egert? Egert? Egg, like, eggs. Like, it looks like it's Eggs Benedict of sorts, but like, what are you supposed to be? Enchanté. He's so refined in how he holds himself and how he speaks, but that name is suspicious. Now to the matter at hand. I don't like the way this man moves. <laughs> My overcoat, return it at once to someone with the style to carry it off. It's just a black suit. What? Yeah, every move he makes, every breath he takes, I can't stand watching him. Just give the fucking coat back. What? That doesn't suit what you're wearing at all. And you were wearing white before. So let that be an end to the matter. And thank you for your custom, Mr. Egbert Benedict, sir. With such reasonable rates of interest, I may even decide to come back. This is why I hate grown-ups. Just cause I'm a diver. Everyone thinks that makes me a liar. And the contents of the coat pockets, if you please, broker. But of course, sir, here's a disc for you. Just this one. Pardon, sir? I was expecting another. Uh, that is, I deposited another. Another disc? Oh, oh, oh dear. I will write to inform you, sir, that what was deposited with me was merely the overcoat. The disc happened to be in one of the pockets, but I was completely unaware of it until now. So, Guttling, you're hiding more of what's rightfully mine, are you? Says who, eh? I don't know nothing about! Very well. Then I shall bid you farewell. Say goodbye to style. Oh. Wait a minute! That disc! Is mine. Oh, yeah. What? What do you think you are doing, you little trump? You've you've drawn blood. You filled the animal. How? Where? Oh my! There's blood on the disc. How did you? What? It's because of those sharp little bumps. Oh, but he's wearing gloves. The man must have scratched his finger on them. But he's wearing gloves. He's literally gloved. I found it first, I. I mean, it belonged to me, old man. So you're not having it? Oh, you! You take it! Uh, me? If I hang on to it, they'll have it off me again. So you keep hold of it. <laughs> He's seeing me do this. I, what's stopping me from- Mr. Strahd, I- Why is this disc so important to her? The music box disc has been entered into the court record. A metal disc used to play music in a mechanical music box. A piece of music which remains identified is stored on the disc by means of small protrusions. How did it draw blood? He's wearing gloves. I don't get- You there. In the black livery. Hand that disc to me at once, please. No! Don't! He's lying! Grown-ups are all liars! Ugh, 
Well, what do I do now? How am I going to resolve this? Just like I'm leaving. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting out of here. It's mine now. <laughs> I don't think we were supposed to run away. <laughs> but I did. I, <laughs> I just left it and let me run away from the situation. There's no one here, right? No. <laughs> okay, I guess I wasn't supposed to leave. I'll go back. <laughs> leave <laughs> what am i supposed to do oh, oh that was so funny <laughs> what do you want me to do wow mrs Strahd is really looking daggers at the mysterious gentleman we need to do something to calm things down before she loses control and attacks him again oh wait there he is <laughs> when things don't when nothing happens it's usually because i have to um mr sholmes what are you examining with such keen interest there? As you enjoy a bar of caramel, I see. What? Oh, he's holding a <laughs> What is he doing? <laughs> I fucking hate this guy. So, you found me at last, Mr. Narodo. Sorry? After that young pickpocket sent me on my way, I was forced to lurk in the shadows. Cruelly ostracized, as the rest of you partook in the jovial atmosphere's fellowship. I had nothing to occupy my mind, but was too ashamed to let society see what my downfall had done to me. So feigning mock interest, I pretended to examine the tedious trinkets in this desolate place. Whilst, as you shrewdly observed, gnawing on the only friend I have left, this 7% solution of caramel. It's called Sholm's Caramel. It's your own branded caramel? Pray, do you claim to understand the depths of my despair, Mr. Narodo? But how could you? I was so lonely. So desperately lonely. And then, why on earth didn't you rejoin the conversation? <laughs> Son of a God. Uh, things have gone from bad to worse here, you know. Uh, yes, I overheard much of your conversation. Or rather, in my craving for human contact, my ears devoured every word that was uttered. <laughs> God, you really were sad, weren't you? My gosh. Poor Mr. Sholmes, I feel simply awful for you. It was seen that my inferences are correct. Oh, surely you're not about to tell us that you've solved the entire case once again? My dear madame, sometimes I wonder where my genius for deduction to be commoditized, whatever. How much could I pawn it for? It seems Mr. Sholmes has had another on one of his flashes of inspiration. But who knows if it will help resolve the situation between Mrs. Lestrade and the mysterious gentleman. What's the right thing to do here? Listen to the deduction. Why would I not? He's he's lonely. We gotta humor him somehow. <laughs> 